Good morning and welcome back to Monk Provincial Park everyone. Super windy last night so I had to roll up our mat. Luckily I had those workout dumbbells still in there so I stacked those. Our chair had actually blown over and all our stuff started blowing away last night but luckily I managed to bundle that up, weigh it down. We've got the awning out there. It's going to provide a little bit of shade for the fridge which it did get down to supposedly 8 or 9 degrees last night. So the fridge is working well. Our fridge is reading at like 2 degrees right now. Fingers crossed it lasts throughout the day and keeps the food fresh. And otherwise we are set to enjoy a beautiful sunny day. I think highs of only 24 and full sun. So good camping and we're ready to enjoy it. morning I ended up making us some oatmeal which we haven't had in a really long time honestly mostly because oatmeal is like I don't know kind of like a wintry breakfast like it's a hot breakfast that lately we haven't been wanting to have because it's been so hot every morning but it got down to like nine degrees or something last night so this morning it was like just cool enough to where like oatmeal sounded like it would be good and then I added some peanut butter and brown sugar and honestly probably a little bit too much peanut butter Oh, and bananas as well. So it's like banana, peanut butter, brown sugar, basically dessert for breakfast, but delicious. And now that Chloe's finally up from her nap, we're able to go for a walk. I feel like she's finally getting to that stage where she won't just sleep anywhere. Like before we go on a walk and she'd just fall asleep in a stroll if she wanted, but she's past the newborn stage and she wants a proper nap in her bed. She won't just fall asleep anywhere anymore, so we kind of had to plan things more around her nap times and she's only awake for about like an hour and a half to an hour and 45 minutes between each nap, so yeah, definitely got to plan out when we want to do things and when we want to cook meals and all that kind of stuff, especially when she's taking a nap in the RV and you don't want to be too noisy in the RV when she's taking a nap so she doesn't wake up, so yeah. Lots of planning with Chloe, but we're gonna head out for a walk now and do a little campground tour here. It is such a beautiful campground here. It kind of reminds us of that Ashcroft vibe that I liked at our Barnes Lake recreation site. Except for you can get campsites right on the lake like we are that are super private, all lined up from your neighbors, nice pine trees for some shade, and you get a nice lake breeze there as well. Otherwise, there's nice mountain sites here as well. Yeah, you're not right on the lake, it's still over there, but you get all these nice little rocky hillsides, super private, beautiful pine trees. It is so cool here. So of course the campsites down there that we're at are really really nice being like directly above the lake and having the lake breeze but we're up on the hillside here we're at campsite number 121 i think and you still get like a really nice view of the lake and you're up kind of more in the pine trees up in here and it's really really nice and there's lots of like rocks around and stuff so super cool landscape you'll notice back there there's some outhouses um there's also a couple of these where are they? Bathroom buildings there, but sadly no showers. A lot of the provincial parks that we've been at lately do have a shower house, which is really, really nice when you're wanting to conserve water or if you're tenting, but not here, no shower hoses to be found. Oh, yeah. 
So Monk Provincial Park is located maybe 15 minutes outside of Merritt, if that. Merritt is one of the main cities you're going to pass through when you're taking the Coquihalla Highway going from Vancouver to Calgary, basically anywhere from the lower mainland to the interior and farther onto Canada. So a super common spot you're going to be passing through if you ever travel in Canada and you're RVing out this way. And they have a huge day use parking spot here we've seen too. So if you're passing through, we really like this campground so far. It's beautiful, all the pine trees, the rocks, the lake. And the day use parking being so big, even if you had a big trailer, you could easily pull in here, come check it out for a bit. Most BC provincial parks seem to also have these amphitheaters. We really like that idea. We're going to Banff later on in the year here still. And we think now that COVID's kind of getting everyone vaccinated, they might be opening up the amphitheater displays again which out of all the times we've been to Banff National Park, we've never seen. So we're hoping to catch that while we stay here. And I was just saying BC Provincial Parks, it would be cool if they use these areas more and put on plays and educational things for kids. And it turns out this morning was actually one of them where they went around and kind of educated you on the invasive plants. And then you actually got to help kind of pick them and keep the park clean as well. So that's a cool idea, but amphitheaters. Hopefully we get to see some more activity using that. And we kind of get to see the parks educate people more on the outdoors instead of just kind of camping and RVing out here but again glad they have it. So just past the day use parking is the second loop of this campground area. We're in one loop way on that end of the campground and there's one smaller loop here it's like campground 1 to 30 ish and it looks like there's some pretty cool like cliff side campgrounds so let's go check it out. back to our beautiful campsite and we got back just in time too. We've been logging Chloe's naps and sleeps in a little app we have to keep track of it all. And we found out it's sweet spot time right now so she's getting ready to go down for a nap here, which is convenient because we're gonna start lunch up here as well. We have the water boiling outside for our noodles. We have one of those portable butane stove tops from Canadian Tire so we figured we have a beautiful view like this, cook outside and also then all the moisture and heat isn't gonna be in the RV when we're trying to keep it a bit cooler in there of course. But on the note about temperature, it's 80 degrees inside the RV right now and we're at the highest temperature of the day supposedly so hopefully it doesn't get any hotter than 80 and what we've been seeing still being midday lunchtime now it's two degrees right now inside the RV fridge and that's running on the propane so our fridge is working fine again here it looks like the theory we've come down to is an absorption fridge kind of has a hard time dealing with hot ambient temperatures so Whenever we've been in an electrical site and thought electric was working well, we also had AC running, keeping the RV kind of at like a 74 degree temperature for Chloe. So if we have air conditioning going, you gotta think, the two sidewalls of the fridge and the door are all on the inside of the fridge. So three quarters of the walls are inside. And then only the one quarter outside deals with the outside hot air coming from the behind. But when we have the AC keeping it cool inside, it's never been a problem. But when we were in Skamekin and we've been in other hot situations like when we were in Ellison and our food started going bad on us for that ceviche, our RV was reading in the 90 degrees Fahrenheit, which is just super hot. So you got to imagine you go from being in the low 70s to high 90s. The fridge just can't keep up, especially when you're going in it ever. It's not built to cool down hot temperatures, that's what we think it is. So we're glad that's working right now at least. We did actually wash the orifice, which is where the gas comes out and goes into the burner. Since we cleaned that orifice and let it soak in some of the cleaning alcohol solution, it actually has been putting out a bit more gas, we think, because when our fridge is running and we're sitting outside, you can definitely hear the flame running a lot more. It's a lot more audible. And that's something you want to listen for, not just see a good flame, but you should be able to hear it as well if it's a hot, steady running flame on your fridge. So if you're having any issues, that might make it a little bit better as well. Again, ours is louder and hopefully running a little bit better from that, but we think again, it's just that temperature. Being up here in the mountains in the Coquihalla, I think we're sitting at 24 degrees Celsius is a high, 80 degrees inside the RV with sun on it. We've got a nice breeze coming off the lake, it's a mountain breeze and we are just loving being out here. Super beautiful, rocks, cliffs, lakes, these pine trees. I love looking at these pine trees lately even, they look so cool. I don't know, we don't have pine trees out in the interior where we're from in the shoe swap. So whenever we're in a different climate, I like to take advantage of checking it out a bit more, but we're gonna get lunch cooking here now. Otherwise, Alicia should be having Chloe just about asleep if we're lucky. 
and then we'll get the noodles boiling and we'll eat. Luke has the pasta all done up here. I just rinsed it in cold water and cooled it down. And I don't know if he told you what we're making, but we're making a Thai noodle salad. So I also quickly chopped up some red onions, tomatoes, green onions, and red peppers. And then to that, we're gonna add this. It's like broccoli slaw. It has broccoli, Brussels sprouts, Napa cabbage, carrots, kale, just some yummy greens to go in the salad. And then, of course, the noodles. And we've got some shredded chicken and some limes to squeeze on top. Some chopped up cashews and this Thai peanut sauce. So I'm really excited about this. Let's assemble this and get eating. Okay, so cold salad on a hot day is always a nice idea in the sunshine. It is Thai food, so this one's for you out here, Mark Weens, if you're ever watching or if you've watched Thailand food videos. I tried the sauce and it tasted like a pretty authentic Thai style sauce, so I'm looking forward to this. Mm. I haven't watched Mark Weens in a little bit, sorry man. But that is really good. We're gonna take in the beautiful view now. And lunch is on. I mentioned that Merritt is in between Vancouver and your way into the interior, but it's also just a little south of Kamloops, which has been having a lot of wildfires lately. So we were surprised not to have smoke here. It's been a real nice change because Salmon Arms little valley mountain area has been super smoked in. And we've been having beautiful blue skies like this, taking all that in again. But look behind me towards Kamloops way. Whew. Oh, there is smoke coming in up there. We're hoping it doesn't roll down here too far and affect our air quality. The wind is still blowing that way, so hopefully it keeps going away from us, but it is looking a little ominous having the smoke rolling over the mountains here. This campsite's actually on the side of the lake as well. There's Merritt, and then there's a, the Nicola Lake into the Nicola Valley, which is beautiful. But the campsite is on the off side of the road that goes along the cliffs in here. So we were saying like, imagine if a fire were to start on the access road to Merritt, I think there's like a really long crazy looking forest service road I saw that you could take if you were to have to get out in case of emergency, but let's hope that smoke is not any indication that we're in trouble in the future here. Smoke update, it's about five o'clock right now and it looks like it's gone a little bit better with the amount of smoke coming over that mountain, but we were just sitting here it's crazy that you could watch it all roll in and it's starting to get that orange tinge in the air. The sun's glowing orange again. I mean, the sun's always kind of orange, you could say, but glowing like smoke fire orange. And the table had like this cool pink reflection on there was so much smoke filtering through. You would think it's like dusk right now, but only almost dinner time, sort of. But hopefully it starts shaping up better and we're glad we did our walk earlier today and kind of got a look around while it was beautiful at least because I don't know, man, Salmon Arm's been so smoky for so long now. It's getting a little tiring being completely socked in the smoke. So fingers crossed this blows away tonight for us here at least. Okay, so it's a few hours later. We spent a good like hour and 45 minutes trying to put Chloe down for her last nap of the day. She was really fighting it. She was so overtired. It was kind of crazy. Apparently she's going through like four months sleep regression, I guess it's called. So that was fun. <laughs> But it's finally time to get some dinner cooking. She's woke up now from her nap, um, officially. And it's like 8.30 now, so it's gonna be her bedtime pretty soon, but we're pretty hungry, so we're gonna get dinner cooking. Tonight we've got some shrimp that I've been marinating in some paprika, some onion powder, some garlic, and a little bit of honey. 
and then we're gonna put that on some skewers with some sliced up chorizo and then some rice on the side so it should be a pretty good dinner we're gonna cook outside again because why not it's just so beautiful and again it's getting a little bit cold actually so I got my sweater on but yeah let's get cooking Dinner's finished. Luke and Chloe are back there hanging out. <laughs> it's almost Chloe's bedtime, but I think we're gonna eat first. I mean, we're probably gonna have to take turns eating because <laughs> she really likes sitting up right now. What was there? Like I was saying, she really likes to sit up right now. She doesn't like to lay down or even like She's not crazy about being like cradled anymore or anything, so you can't even use one hand to eat. So I think we'll take turns eating. But yeah, I think that's it from us tonight. Yeah, settle down for some dinner here. And then other than that, hopefully Chloe goes down for her bedtime. The nap times are kind of all over the place today. So we'll see what we do, but nice little camping trip here. And then otherwise it'll be off to the next camping adventure. Anyways, we'll see you next time guys. Bye. Take care friends.